What is going on, everyone? This is here with another advanced words with replay analysis. Today, we're looking at a <laughs> That's right. We got a matchup between Mr. Starflash 250 and Fyrum. Two perennial top 10 Fog players. They never drop out of the top 10. I think I've done two videos on each of these players. You don't really need too much of an introduction. They're strong ass players. They're entertaining ass players. We got the Yeedy Starflash versus the Fyrum Tactics. Oh, it's gonna be a banger. That's all I'm gonna say. And what else we got here? We also got a legendary CO matchup. That's right. The tier three legendary matchup of Andy versus Drake. Who's gonna use the power first? Are you gonna hold down the power if you're Andy? Wait for him, Drake to use Typhoon, then use your superpower, then use your CO power? Is Drake gonna be using it first or second? Is Drake gonna be using his CO power? Then Andy uses his superpower, then Drake uses another CO power? There are so many different ways this match can go, and so many unique ways you can use your CO powers in this matchup. It is one of the closest matchups possible in tier two. Man, I don't know which one to pick, but I, in this instance, I'd probably say, Andy to do this map. Now, if we look at this map, it's one versus one Marengo, and it's actually one of my favorite maps. It's actually a very old school map. This has been in the rotation for, God, ages. I think I played it in August, 2021. Believe it or not, this is the one map where I beat Go7. That's right, I beat Go7 in Fog on this map in Global League back in like September, 2021. Guess what CO I was playing? I was playing Drake. What CO was Go playing? He was playing Lash. Now, Lash isn't entirely great on this map. There's a lot of force and whatnot, but I definitely would probably pick Andy and Drake, maybe Kindle on this map before I would choose Lash. So this map right here, it's got contested comm towers. They're actually kind of in the middle and they actually can be captured. It's contested HQ over here as well. Well, I would say contested, uh, but HQ caps are possible. I've seen quite a few HQ caps. I think I actually lost to an HQ cap, uh, granted on this map when I was like a little scrub back when I was like 900 or 1000 or something. Uh, but this is a pretty fun map. There's a back airport, which you kind of want to get a lot of use out of because copters are pretty good on this map because of all the mountains and the terrain and whatnot. So Drake kind of loses a bit of that by losing 20% on his copter firepower, but it's not the end of the world. He's got a great CO power to go with it. Now, this is also very... When I say I love a map, you can typically assume that the map has a lot of variability. There's different openings. It's not always a day three recon. Always gonna have that tank on turn five. No, no, you can have T-copter openings. You can have APC openings. You can have recon openings. You can have tank openings. You can have artillery openings. You can have so many different types of openings on this map. And I like artillery on this map too. Look at these forests. You put an artillery here, or even better, you put it like here, guarding, 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 guarding three properties by putting an artillery there or here. It's just artillery is good. You can lock down the comp tower. I love artillery on this map. I love copters on this map. Uh, it's just a fun map in general. Very balanced. That's why it's been around for so damn long. Everyone loves the Morango. Everyone loves to do the tango with the Morango. Now, these labs are useless. I don't know why the people put labs on maps when they don't even do jack shit. But anyway, I'd say the most common opening on this map is actually the APC opening, though. People plop an APC here and they boost their infantry to capture these properties. The thing about this map, distance doesn't quite equate what properties are yours. Like these look, these properties down here are closer to blue than they are to yellow, but this is yellow's strong side down here and this is blue's strong side up here. And look at all this terrain and stuff. It's pretty roady, pretty road. Uh, so you bring down your units over here. You got mountains in the way, you got forests in the way. It's harder to get these. So these typically follow under the control of yellow and maybe even these two as well because you have two bases versus one base. Even though this is much closer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Spaces versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Full extra 6 spaces, but it's just one base in an airport. You can bring your copters down there for, for help, but it's you're going to get overrun by this 2 base over there, typically. The center is God knows how that goes. Mechs are pretty decent, decently viable as well, uh, because there's lots of mountains. If they mech up, then you tech up. That's how it goes, man. You bring up your, the big boy medium tanks, you bring in the big boy neo tanks, and you blast those mechs to smithereens, and they can't do jack shit to you. So, just a fun map in general. I usually use the APC opening. I experimented with an artillery opening, and it backfired completely terribly. 
in a game versus Math Blitz, so I don't recommend doing that. I think the best openings are the APC opening and the Recon opening, just by a virtue of the Recon zooming over here before Yellow can even capture these bases over here. Because first, Yellow even has to capture the space. Then after that, they have to go all the way up there with units as well. Yeah, Recon's going to be over here and sitting on these cities way before Yellow can even plan to do it. Anyway, without further ado, let's just get into this game. It is a, it's a goodie. So starting off in the bottom, in the yellow comet, we have Mr. Starflash. And then we have Mr. Drakey Poo in the Fire Emblem, the Bluebies over at the top. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, yellow can opt to go for this property or this property. It's not a huge difference maker. Um, as you can see here, looks like uh, Drakey Poo decided to go for the front one because this one in the middle can capture this and this one over here can capture this one. So therefore, I typically capture this one. So this middle property actually captures that property right there. Little, little miscalculation by Starflash, I'd say. But it happens. But it happens. So, typically standard opening. But, you know, just infantry cap and get in the airport early. Maybe you're going for the T-copter opening. Who knows? There's a nice chain going here. Chain. 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 Or chain, chain, chain. Like, so you want to get in this mountain early, get this chain. There's not many chains in the middle as well. Just kind of Darth of properties. You like that vocab word? Darth. Anyway, uh, we're going to see APC openings for each. You don't put it in the front, you actually put it in the back, which is kind of unique. Uh, you'll see what they do with it. They actually do two different types of utilizing this APC. Sometimes you go in the middle using the APC, a little angled over here. Sometimes you go in the far, in the corners over here with the APC. And each of them does a different technique. So first off, you get a little boosty poo. Boogusta. Get a little uh, vision over there, and then this one goes in there. So it actually helps out with a nice boosty poo. We'll probably see the same exact thing. Everyone copied it. I thought, I'm not sure if Go7 came up with it first or who came up with it first, but everyone loves that. We got a little Riki over here, Enrique over here. I like this early recon, even in tandem with the APC. Just gonna harass a bunch of shit over there. A uh, tank's not gonna be there for a while, I would assume, because you kind of assume that your opponent also gets an APC. Yeah, so no tank down up there. You actually have a tank up here. And preferably, I kind of like having the tank at the weak side early on in the game, because you kind of expect the recon. Uh, so I kind of like that. Uh, I mean, you know, when you see strong side, you're like, dang, dang. I understand. It's it's that it's that primal instinct to do that. But he's gonna pay for that because this little recon just whoa, that was a little snazzly little movement over there. I'm I'm just in, I'm in a, in a DG mood. What can I say? Double boosters, boosty, boosty. This guy's gonna get in there. We're talking boosts for days. Weak side tank. Firem is a disciple of Deej. What can I say? He does a lot of things that I would do. He's very Deej-esque. Not really great at openings for the most part, but really good at tactics. Kind of like me. When he gets far behind, he can come back using good tactics. Uh, in this case, I like his opening just because it mirrors what I would do. Uh, so I'm a little biased towards Firem's playing style. So Starflash is going over here in this mountain to capture this property or this property. Probably the down over here property, I would assume. I'm not entirely sure though. It's anyone's pick. Whereas Fire Room seems to be doing a little bit more of a middle game uh, booster Rooney. So he's capturing that, and then I'm gonna assume he's gonna put the APC here, boost that right here, and then he can capture that, is what I would do. And I'm telling you, he's a disciple of Deej. We, we, we always are accepting disciples of Deej, and I also would do this. Oh my god, Fire Room builds a copter as Drake. You never expect that. A copter, early copter as Drake on the weak sides, because you're gonna expect to see a recon or a tank or something. And then a copter comes out of nowhere, you're like, shit, I didn't build an anti-air. Then the anti-air takes like five turns from to get over here to there, so. Fire him, man. Fire him. You gotta love him. You gotta love him, fire him. Starflash going for the bottom, whereas blue is nowhere near going for the bottom over here, so. Let's see which playstyle works out best for each of them. Starflash going all out tankies in the bottom. Finally does two tanks over here, but base skips in the process, just in order to get that recon defense to beat off the recon, so. But uh, Firem, he's captured most of the property. He's got his comp tower early in the Starflash. He prioritized it first. The recon sees where the units are now. Um, the thing about the copter is you won't have tank backup to back up that recon if it's attacked by a fellow tank. So you have to worry about that a little bit. I would have brought the copter straight down actually rather than going to the side here. I guess it, it was a little more maneuverability, but I don't know. I'd be dead set on going to the bottom if I were to fire him. Uh, because if you go over here, you're going to be more overextended and it's going to be easier to reinforce with an anti-air. Whereas the battles over here, it's going to be a lot closer and it's going to be harder for them to reinforce with an anti-air. But hey. 
You never know. So now Starflash gets vision. He's like, oh, he hasn't captured that. Oh, he hasn't captured that. Brings his tank in the forest over there. He's got a lot of tanks. He's got three triple tank, three triple tank Tordred threats going on over here. But Fire Emblem, he's bringing his copter over the side now. Now we're kind of diverging in the Disciples of DG. Now you got the Old Testament DGs would go down here, and then the New Testament DGs would definitely go over there. I'm not gonna pretend like I've read the Bible in like 20 years, but that's my understanding of right there. Disciples of Deej wouldn't do that. Uh, Recon coming in, I don't like that. I would have gone for the KO first because then you'd lose vision and then you can get it. But hey, I understand because the copter, it's gonna get a free hit off, which is nice. The thing about Andy though, the copter is gonna do like four damage and then Andy's gonna just hyper upgrade that. So not typically as good as it normally would be, but hey. And Sp Star Flash hasn't even captured his freaking comp tower. So all these fights are gonna be in Fire Room's favor. Now imagine if that copter would back up that tank there. Rather than that, I mean, he's gonna hit a tank either way, but mm, that copter, man. Anti-air, I like the prophylactic anti-air over here. It makes a lot of sense. Starflesh is not building air. He's going to build one now. He's got 17K, he's probably gonna build artillery, infantry, copter, infantry, if I had to guess. We'll see if he does that. Easy hit, easy hit. And if he didn't kill that, maybe he'd block with the tank. That'd be even smarter. And then you would never even get the hit off on the tank. So it's easily counterable if you have an idea what's coming. Firearm though, not lying in the corner like Starflash. Starflash might sneak that. Starflash might sneak that corner property over there. So I'm kind of liking the Starflash side over here. I like this little side attack in the mountain. Now you can get vision as well. So I like this little opening by Starflash a little more. Boom. That was kind of a bad roll, uh, because he doesn't have the common tower. That was not a great roll. Uh, but okay. I'm liking Starflash's position better. Double recon, so that's a little weird. I don't get a recon on the weak side. You have these mountains, you got this mountain here for vision. I don't really like recons that much, except for the early game on the sides over here. Like this one would make a lot more sense, but like there's so many mountains and they suck in the middle. Like your recons aren't gonna be trash there, so I'm not really liking the later game recon, so I don't agree with that by Starflash. Didn't build a copter, just built some whack ass shit. Here comes the copter, four damage, one damage back. Ooh, bad roll. Fireman does not even attack in this because he's like, oh, Starflash definitely got the comp tower. What kind of dumb, stupid idiot wouldn't get his comp tower till day 10? Like, who does that? Starflash, apparently. Fireman has no idea, so he just lets it be. Just lets it be. And he's retreating on his weak side over here, as he should. Builds an artillery on his weak side, like I said. Um, I don't like artilleries on the weak side generally, but this is an artillery map. You can plop it here, even better right here. And then you can defend this property to the end of time. Uh, so I kind of like artillery. I'm not, I'm not sold on it quite yet, but... And now Starflash is capturing that comm tower. And the recon's coming in. Well, this one's like a little dog shit recon. He's gonna build an ante here now. He built the anti-air at the bottom, which is kind of funny. So maybe a Starflash was expecting the Deej copter, but I mean, it's still taken two to three turns to get there anyway, but... So it's a little more uh, intuitive to bring the copter to the weak side to the strong side. So I think Fire Room definitely caught him off guard. Now Starflash has to double up on the anti-air. Two anti-airs for a single copter, which is kind of funny, actually. So maybe there's some playability in this by, uh, by Starflash. I actually would have built a copter probably rather than anti-air because you're Andy, your copters are invincible. They're not gonna die except to anti-air. Although there is an anti-air over here, so I don't know. They're doing their own thing. I can't complain. Do we thing, can't complain. Bring the tanks in the middle lane. And uh, Firearm's gotta interrupt that comp tower else he's gonna lose it. And it's kind of hard to regain a comp tower in this map if I'm being perfectly honest. Brings it in, ooh, you love to see it, because he knows. Who brings an anti-air on their weak side this early in the game against Drake? No one. So he's like, if that bins, boom. Boom, double hit KO. Can't hyper upgrade a dead unit. Mm, preach. Can't hyper upgrade a dead unit. Firearm's looking feisty at the top. Look at all these infantry. But if I, Star, Star Flash over in the corner, I, I don't know what that, Infantry's doing off in the corner, but he's capturing the property. A double artillery. Hmm. I guess the idea is plop it over like in this forest and prevent the comp tower cap, but it looks like he's already kind of knock, knock, knocking on the comp tower cap. So Andy does have 
and that's it. Star Flash does have that income advantage at this point by virtue of having this corner property and having this property, whereas Blue does not quite have that yet. So it's, it's gonna be a difference of a corner property. So I think Andy's going to actually have an income lead, but Starflash lost a free tank over here, whereas Mr. Firearm got injured, but he didn't lose his tank. So, ooh, he's going hard on that comp tower though, and I don't know how you stop that. How do you stop that comp tower? Oh, you don't stop that comp tower. That comp tower is Starflash's. That comp tower is Starflash's. Now if I'm from, get that thing to flip out of here. Get that thing to bluff out of there. You know there's at least a copter, if not an anti-air, and there is an anti-air. He's going balls to the wall over there though. Free tank hit, I guess. Nice, and then bring the artillery behind. I would have brought the artillery actually right there and then put the infantry there, because if you go put the artillery here, it completely covers this tank. Whereas you can do a tank, tank attack here and a tank attack here and then kill it and there's no real, you know, backup attack. Uh, just that other injured tank. So I don't really quite agree with that. He's going feisty over here, though. He's going feisty in the middle. You see what's going on over there? Boom, boom. Oh, they're gonna switch comm towers? Beep, beep. Here comes the beepers. And by beepers, I mean infantry on an APC. I don't know what beepers is. It sounds like a freaking grown man feeding an infant. Here comes the beepers. No, daddy, no more. <laughs> Sorry, that took a dark turn. I don't know what the beepers is, but maybe you don't want to know. Uh, and <laughs> anyway, Starflash has two comm towers now. 20% firepower to Drake's 0%, meaning his copters are absolute garbo. They have 80% attack. They're going to do like a tickle to a tank. They're going to talk a tickle three to a tank on like a, a plane or something. Like we're talking some shitty ass copters. Starflash has the income lead. Starflash has the comm tower lead. But he lost a tank over here. He lost another tank over here. So he's behind on unit count. If we look quickly at our statty poos, five deaths, six kills. So he's got more kills, but he lost two tanks and he's killed a recon and the infantry and stuff. So pretty even actually, I'd say. A little more even than I thought. And now he killed another tank. So Starflash is actually ahead in all regards. And he's, he's gotten to the point where he's just like, cop to take inf cop to take in, in, crop, like when you get to that 18,000, sometimes it gets mindless. But is Andy? What the fuck? What the foe? Dude, I. I mean, it's kind of cheeky. You can't get past it, but like. An APC? Okay. Anyway, that was uh, interesting. But uh, looks like. Firearm's gonna try to reclaim that property, but it looks like this thing can just, I would just plop that bad boy on there rather than put it in the river over there. Uh, but Firearm's going hard in the middle. Basically, it's just an all out slog now. Uh, kills off that tank. I don't know why he brought this tank back. I would have brought that back, killed that tank, then got a first strike with this tank over here. Although that copter is right over there as well. So it's a little tricky dicky. Um, I guess he wants to block the copter from the attack by the anti-air, but I think he's gonna get to the copter regardless. Uh, so now it's, this, this is a toss up right now. I don't know what's going on. Boom, he hits the tank. Boom, he, oh, he doesn't get the copter there, but he gets the copter from behind. Psych, bitch. He's like, oh, just one of those, right? No. Boom, from both sides, sandwich. Boom, 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 boom. Oh God. And here's the part I was like, what? What? Why are you using a hyper upgrade? What? He's gonna use his Drake power. Like, where did this come from? What did he use it for? To save the APC? Like, what? I was so confused. I was like, why are you using a hyper upgrade? Well, he's saving money by not building any expensive units. He just bought a copter and three infantry to save some money for, for the Typhoon, but like, why? The stats right now, 17 to nine. Starflash is killing it. He's had 2k, killing it. He's killing it off 17 to nine units, killing it. He's got more in unit value, but he used the freaking power at like the dumbest time of a zero sense. And now we're gonna see a Baboon Typhoon and uh, it's gonna do a lot of damage. Boom. 
Just like that. Even on the score, before the attack even begins. And now the attack has begun. Beep, beep, bist. All these units coming in. And by coming in, I mean all these units are dead, so he's not attacking anything. And I don't like this over here. Like, why did this retreat? I would have stayed on that property until you were killed. Like, I didn't see a recon over here. Everything's fighting in the middle. Why didn't Starflash's infantry just camp out on that property? Just camp out, go glamping or camping or, I don't know, go fight a bear or something. Like, what's going on? Anyway, all these 8 HP infantry sucking, suck, sucking something or another. Uh, doing random boosts. But now Blue is going to recapture this property. We might recapture this property as well, but Starflash, on the other hand, is fighting a lot over here. I mean, it's a bunch of 8 HP units. But he's got the... Okay, so he's back to the unit value advantage after that brutal Typhoon. Brutal Typhoon. Unfortunately, the worst kind of Typhoons is one where you just... Bleh, here's a Typhoon! End turn. You want a Typhoon? Boom! Then attack, then kill, kill, kill. You got like one or two kills over here. You want a Typhoon that's on the offensive and you just grossly destroy your opponent. Not really the case here. But he's got some counterplay now. That Antair is going to one-shot that Copter if he, if he so chooses. And he does so choose. And uh, yeah, he's going on the offensive again. Here comes Phyrum. Firing on all cylinders. Beep, beep. And uh, yeah, pretty decent engagement. He's got a bunch of weakened Starflash tanks over here. I don't know why Starflash put all his tanks within attacking range. They're only 8 HP. He's going to use a power, though, I would assume, to heal all his 8 HP units. Um, but I'm assuming he used the power. We'll see how much damage is done. Ooh, he's close. Uh, sacks that to prevent the cap. Mm, uh, maybe. We got a T-Copter. Don't look now. We got a T-Copter. Expect to see some mechs. Inspect the mech, man. Expect the mech when you see a T-Copter. Is he going to use the power, though? No. I would have attacked and used the power a little bit. But now he's teching up. He's got two fat boys over here. Two fat medium tanks. Firem is not teching up at all. He just got tanks galore. He's got a lot of ant tears. He's got copters. He's got artillery. Luckily, medium tanks worst enemy. For Firem, he's luckily at least. He's got two artillery to blow that thing to smithereens. So he's, he's prepared at least. And uh, this is basically all Firem's now. And Firem's got a good counterattack. Don't look now, but Firem, boom, firing on all the cylinders. I don't want to over. I don't want him to overextend too much over here though, because he's got a little clump over here, and Starflash has most of his units over here, so he's got more of a death ball over here, whereas Firem's a little more split. I wouldn't argue that most of his forces up here, but he's still got a little contingent down there. He's looking to recapture that Calm Tower finally. Oh my God! Look at those anti-airs. He's got three anti-airs. I mean, to his credit. Starflash does have two copters within vision, maybe a third out of vision, but not actually. Uh, but Starflash coming in, looks like he's going to use a power, if I had to guess. Boom. Yeah, there's Hyper Repair. Now everything's healed. Now, I don't know why he didn't use it the last turn, and he waited till now, but... Ooh, nice one. He's got a pretty decent push going. Uh, but Firearm's getting close to having his own Typhoon again. And that Typhoon's gonna hurt. So... Boomba! Dead Copter. Uses Tsunami! Very curious. I guess in order to prevent that cap right there, he wanted to use Tsunami. Because I don't see any other reason why you would use it in this context. Uh, he really wants that Calm Tower though. So he's probably gonna bring this infantry down here to back up. And then he'll, he'll, he'll join cap afterward. It's actually not terrible use of... Uh, Whatever the hell it's called. He's trying to trap that copter in there, it looks like. I would probably attack the, well, there's no real reason to attack the anti if you don't have a copter yourself over there and the copter's all the way down here. Uh, luckily for him, so he, I, I understand why he's not just, you know, YOLOing into that. Another late day recon on the weak side. I don't quite understand these things. I would have gotten like an infantry or something and put it in the mountain or a mech or something. Um, so I don't know, they like their late uh, infantry, but oof, oof. Luckily for him, he's gonna get some payback. Because, uh, yeah. That anti air over there? See, I would've put the infantry there, and then you can recap, kill off this, kill off that. Uh, just would've made a lot more sense, but. Starflash, good roll right there. Ooh. Don't look now, Drake's got the income, uh, or the, uh, unit value advantage, but they're tied on income. 
Absolutely tied, neck and neck. Neck and neck. That's what we're talking about. Starflash looks like he's saving up a little fundies. Look at that, beautiful artillery placement. Completely protected. Ooh, set chef's kiss right there. <laughs> I think I said chef's kids right there. Dude, chef's kids. He's got some nice kids. Um, looking to recapture that, but it sucks, man. The slogging through all of this as Drake with 0% firepower bonus versus an Andy with 20, it sucks. It really sucks. I mean, it wears on you. Finally teching up for Fire Realm. Honestly, I love Neo Tanks a little bit more on this map. Maybe I would have saved up for an extra turn for a Neo Tank. He saw the medium tank over here, which is why I think he went that. Man, man, I love Neo Tanks too much. Reckless as hell with that medium tank, though. Didn't you just see that thing get blasted? I think he assumed. Oh, standard, you put it in the forest. Yeah, so I won't attack the tank, I'll attack this. Mm -mm. No siree, it's not in that forest. Mm -mm. This APC is coming in handy and another hyper up repair. Um, how much did that even heal? Like 10K? Literally 10K. Um, I don't like that. I'm not gonna pretend, I think that's dumb. I wouldn't have done that. But he wants to cap some stuff. And he will cap some stuff, so maybe... I don't like it though, I just don't like it. And now the copter's coming in, you're gonna gangbang that medium tank. He actually broke through right there. Broke through there. And you're gonna see a tsunami soon. Please don't use a typhoon again. I, I like uh, preserving that sh ship. Uh, brings the copter and now he sees the anti-air, so he's got to bring that copter out around. Bring it around town! Bring in the medium tank. There we go! Golf ball alert! That's what we're waiting to see, baby. Neo tank. I'm assuming Starflash is going to be able to Neo tank soon. Uh, but... Ooh! You hate to see that. Just in range. Bye-bye! Boom! I mean, Starflash got one, two anti-airs for two copters, so he's already got plenty. Ooh, bye-bye. Damn, and you're gonna build another copter this turn. Ooh, great turn by Starflash, my god. Yeah, just looking kind of scary for him at first, but now, you gotta interrupt that cap, though. You can't give up your comp tower that easily after you work so hard for it. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's right, you gotta get it back. But the Typhoon is coming. The Typhoon is coming. Now let's look at the stats. It's looking great for Starflash. 35 to 26, so the numbers are adding up. However, the deaths are a little higher in value. You lost eight tanks, two copters. I don't know, it's just a lot of damage. I think it's because of the Typhoon, and he's gonna get another Typhoon. Ooh, Boomba. Ooh, Boombla. Boonga. Boonga. Oh yeah. Yeah, get the medium tank in range. Oh, not quite of the tank, but you can get the medium tank in range at least. But he's got nothing for the copter except for this, which he kind of just put out in the open, which I'm, I don't quite recommend. But doing the joint cap, he really wants that comp tower. Fire him really. Oh, what? Do you leave it to die? Why'd you leave them to what? Now he gets a free kill. And he didn't even get off the tsunami anyway. And if he uses it. Oh man, Starflash is perfect timing right now. If he uses the tsunami. He's just gonna use his own normal power. Damn. Damn, I'm, I'm feeling good if I'm Starflash at this point. Boom, bada, goom, ba. Yeah, 20%, baby, boom. Boom. Free kill. Free kill. Starflash. Starflash. Dude, what the, f are you snorting, dude? What the literal flop are you That didn't even do 10k healing! Dude, that did 9k! Starflash, what the- Are you snorting, dude? That's not a baboon move, that's like a pig move, like- <laughs> I'll use a handy power before he uses a type. Dude, you had the literal crushing blow. I think he could have won, just- Hold on to that power as soon as Typhoon comes, you use it and everything is healed like nothing even happened. You just lose a little fuel. It's not a big deal, but you use the damn power. Why? 
Maybe he thought he already won, but why? To do that? Is that why you did it? You did want to attack the copter? Is that why you did it? Why? Oh. Oh. At least he's winning. But why? My only question is why? Okay, that's kind of funny. But why? Why? What? What? What is going on? What is going on, Star Flash? Are you having a stroke? Do I need to call 911? What is going on, dude? What the literal flop is going on? I mean, he's crushing it. It's 31 units to 20, but like, you just made a huge baboonian play. Like, full on, like, Harambe darts in the chest. <laughs> like, King Kong falling off the World Trade Center or Empire State Building baboon play. I'm not talking small baboons, I'm talking freaking King Kong. This is like King Kong on tranquilizers. Like, King Kong's dumb enough as is. You've seen that movie. <laughs> put a bunch of tranquilizers in him, there's like. <laughs> you put Advanced Wards by Web in front of a tranquilized King Kong on God knows 10 gallons of opiates. He's gonna make the move like that. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Dude. Freaking tranquilized King Kong over here. And just like that. Oh. oh. Your 10k was so nice, or your 9k healing? Oh, here's the typhoon. <laughs> 34,000! 34,000! Was your 9k nice there, buddy? Was your 9k? Here comes Drake. Here comes Drake. And he's freaking pissed. You see that shit? He doesn't even have a calm tower. He's blowing your little freaking medium tank to smithereens. Here comes the medium or neo tank, boomba. Drake was on his freaking last leg. Oh, maybe you saved your APC. Oh, he's been around since day four. Oh, poor thing. You can tell I was just secondhand embarrassment. You know, like you're watching Kirby or Enthusiasm or some shit. You have your like secondhand cringe. I got some secondhand cringe watching this freaking opioid. Freaking King Kong bullshit, okay? And just like that. You remember Star so Flash had 150,000 to 10,000? Just like that. Units are equal. Everything is equal. Star Flash just coughed up that lead. Not even kill that. You're not gonna kill that. And he saw the thing freaking go in the forest. You can't hide that. Now this recon saw that going there. The recon's gonna reveal it, and then the Neo Tank's gonna kill that. Like. If not even kill the medium tank, which is in range. Star Flash getting sloppy. This is some slop Star Flash, dude. Man. King Kong for sure, dude. In a late day recon on the weak side? My goodness. This is not the Star Flash I know and love. All right, this Neo tank needs to attack this from here. I would have put like the recon right here and just killed off the artillery personally. Yeah, he knows it's there, or else he wouldn't have done that, but like, I don't know. Little strange, doesn't quite reach that unfortunately for him, but he could attack with his anti if he so chooses. Now it looks like he's gonna get the calm tower quite easily. Ooh, that's a nice death ball. That's dumb, because there's a copter over here. Well, he's got a second one, so it's not the end of the world, but... It's a little reckless, I would have like brought that back in the death ball. Was it worth killing an infantry or whatever the hell with that? Probably not, but now it's a 40,000 unit or unit value advantage. And it's got a Neo tank with no answer over here. And he's got a whole bunch of shit over there with no answer. Starflash has a shit ton of money though. He's building his own Neo tank, that's all I'll say. Does reach, he's actually going into the fight in the death ball. I do not agree with that. I mean, he's getting through a bit, but like, I don't think it's worth it. That copter's dead. So, okay, he's got a little mini shit ball over here. I wouldn't call it a death ball, I'd call it a little shit ball. Like a dung beetle. Dung beetle kind of pushes up its feet. Yeah, there's a little shit ball over here. But we got a bomber. Not a Neo Tank, a bomber. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. I kind of prefer a Neo Tank in this situation because Neo Tank, Neo Tank, uh, it's going to live and it can be healed, whereas a bomber is gonna get like nearly one shot with one HP by an Antair and then it's gonna go to six or something. Like, I don't know. But now, Drake, Drake has 
the comp tower. Boom. Ooh, bad roll. Mm, that sucks. Ooh, will it kill with the copter though? Yes sirree. Man, these APCs, they love their APCs. Um Yeah, so it's pretty even now, I would say, for the most part, because Starflash has a nice offensive going over here. He's fighting into the death ball a little strangely. Um But I'd say actually Drake has a Okay. Makes some sense. A lot of his stuff is schlop at this point. Uh, I understand the appeal. It allows some two-hit KOs as well. Beep beep. Nice. Now the copters can do whatever the hell they want. So that's just looking good for Starflash now. Starflash! I'm telling you, he was freaking high on opium or some shit. He was in an opium den smoking it up, man. Him and Confucius were smoking it up. Now, though, he's playing like normal Starflash. Starflash is back. Build an APC. What is he doing that for, Dave? Fuel, or is he gonna build a stealth? Like, stealth is possibility versus Drake. His fighters suck. His fighters won't one shot it, and then you can use a hyper upgrade after that. But stealth after a typhoon, though, yeah, you're gonna run out of fuel. So I don't know if I, I don't know what the APC is for. But uh, Starflash is back, baby. Ooh, you hate to see that chink in the armor. Boom, and then the Neo Tank follow up too. Ooh, that hurts. But the bomb is here. Or is it? Now it won't be a one shot. Interesting typhoon there. I kind of like, I'm a super guy when it comes to Drake for the most part. I'm a super guy. Uh, but, hmm, okay. It is what it is. It's not a terrible play. I usually save that shit for when something's being capped, but nothing's been capped yet. So that bomber's gonna attack the Neo Tank, but he needs to find a way to kill off that anti-air. Uh, but he's not gonna be able to kill off the anti-air, and the anti-air is gonna kill him. So that was a great trade by Phyrum. He's just gonna one-shot that bomber now. Bye-bye. Boom. Oh, shit. Bad roll? Bad roll, maybe? That bomber's, uh... You hate to see it as Andy, because those things are a pain in the ass to kill when he gets a hyper upgrade or something. I don't know why he's fighting into this artillery over there. He saw it clearly earlier. He doesn't see it anymore, so you know it's in a forest. Uh, but it's still equal on income. These guys are just fighting. This is just... Uh, uh, uh. But now Firearm's got a pretty decent lead. But Starflash, another hyper upgrade. From all the Typhoon. De -de 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 Boom. He ain't dead yet. Bomber attacking into an anti-air with a... I don't know what's going on over there. Some carnival shit. Some carnival shit. Triple tanking it, triple tordred tanking it, but Firem has the momentum. He has the unit value. He has the unit count, or he soon will be. He's retreating on the top though, which is smart. You don't wanna, well, he attacked and then he retreated. I hate that. You wanna have macro strategy. If you're attacking somewhere and then you retreat afterward, that's dumb. You want to go all in or all retreat. You don't want to go dabbly wabbly. No. Retreat, dude. Just retreat or go all in. And now he's going to get those free two kills. E. Z. Kills. And Starflash. Coalescing his forces. He was down and out for a little bit, right? But they got equal income. They got equal units for the most part. Everything's equal. He's not out of it. No, Starflash ain't giving up. He's Starflash. Hey, Firearm getting a little too feisty at the top over there. I don't like this is a little dabbly wabbly over here. Mm, my recon's dead. Mm, a lot of things are gonna die. And uh, Starflash now has the teching up advantage. He's got two medium tanks. Dead ass bomber, I suppose. But Firearm only has one medium tank over there. He's gone. It doesn't have any artillery at the top quite yet. So this medium tank's gonna get away with murder. And kill off that uh, recon if he wants to. I'm not sure what he will do with it. He will. Boom, ba. Going for the cap. He wants that income advantage so, so bad. Hiding the copters behind. I love that. I love that. Lur. Yeah, kill off the T-copter with that anti-air. Then you blow the smithereens and you got your own copters doing a bunch of work. And I like that. Yeah, just slow little push over here. Just on the defensive. Hold down this over here. Don't allow him to recap. He's going to recap that probably. Um, can't really do too much about that. Fire him though. We're going to have an equal income. We're gonna have an equal income. Temporarily, Starflash had 
Oh. What's going on? Okay. Um. Hmm. You really want to interrupt that cap? I guess he's got to bring in the artillery now. He's got two art. Uh, he's got two tanks. Okay, I, I can see the appeal in that, but I don't like the really positioning of this artillery. I think you should have put one on the city or this road over here, and then you can lock the city. He didn't really lock the city with anything. Uh, he's getting a little feisty. He's shifting downward now. He's shifting to the middle. And he's healing his bomber on the base, which is interesting in the airport rather. And forcing fire on the trees. Starflash is maintaining that infinite advantage. We're on day 29. It's neck and neck. I don't know who's going to win at this point. I thought Starflash was going to win at the beginning. I thought Fire was going to win after. Now it's dead even again. This is a banger for a reason. Day 29, anyone's game. It's going to come down to a colossal battle. Starflash has the lead though, so he just wants to keep holding on to that, maintaining that, slowly doing a little push at the bottom, slowly doing a little middle bottom push. Bringing it all down to the bottom. Look at this freaking death ball. This is like a crescent moon banana. It's kind of like a banana. It's like yellow and whatnot. Big strong ass banana over here. Big banana for the big baboon, am I right? King Kong size banana for the King Song size. Uh, bleh. I can't speak. I can't speak and he's saving up money for something or other. Oh, he's spending on that, that's what. But he let this all virtually abandoned. Luckily for him, Fire Room doesn't really have anything in range. It's looking like it's his strong side versus weak side at this point. And, uh, I, we'll see what he can do about it. When you use a tsunami instead of a typhoon, there's usually a reason. You want a wall break, you have some ideas, you want to interrupt captures, you want to do something. So why did he use the tsunami? Let's see how much damage it even does. Basically, solid 20k. Not bad. Okay, he attacks there. Oh, it allows the KO. There you go. Okay, ooh, this is pretty strong. Not bad. I'm not disagreeing with it so far. Killed off a medium tank with it. Um, is there any counterplay for Starflash so he can use his power? Yeah, boom. Ooh, yeah. Oh, he's gonna kill that copter too. Yeah, power. Oh, not quite. Attack into that. Yeah, I'm liking. Okay. Okay. That's a little overextendy over there. That's a little overextendy. He's going balls to wall to get that power. He's even sacrificing an infantry to get the power. But yeah, now everything's healed. Mm -hmm. Right back at it. But, uh, the medium tank gets a nice hit off. But, man, he's overloading. Artillery, artillery right in his face. There's an artillery over here. Fire Arm's gonna blow some shit over here. Two copter kills. That tank's dead, the other tank's dead. Medium tank's in danger. Uh, the bomber's back at 8 HP. Don't forget about the bomber. The bomber's back, baby. It was healing, it was chilling, but it's back. Boom, one copter dead. Two copters dead. Starflash is going back. He's had nostalgia. So I was like, oh, I remember when I had two comp towers. It was so nice. So nice. That was like 10 turns ago. But oh, don't look now, but fire was breaking through. Boom. Boom. He's breaking through that little defense over there. And he's got more units. I think Starflash overextended. He overextended here and he overextended here. So now he's on his back foot. But he's not giving up. No, he's Starflash. He's fighting through the pain. He's freaking Starflash. He sees the anti-air. He's like, fluff that mist. I'm coming in. Attack! Boom. Attacking an anti-air with a bomber, of all things. Boom. Nice roll. He's not giving up. The medium tanks are coming. The bombers are streaming. He's attacking infantry to anti-air. God knows what's going on. He's killing off the tank. He attacks the infantry. Is Fire going to be able to get a superpower? He's going to use another Typhoon. Fire Arm's about to capture this. Star Starflash has had a 4k income advantage for a little bit. Maybe 5k or 6k coming up. But he's going to use a Typhoon most likely. Then Starflash can probably... Ooh, cheeky little capture right there. You see that little thing wiggle? Ooh, see that re instant replay wiggle. Wiggly. Yeah, it's dead. And I'm assuming Fire Arm's going to use... I don't know. Oh, that sucks. That's a... Oof. Fire up. Mm. Dead. 
Ah, oh, massacre. Tsunami, so close to a typhoon. Wanna stop that. And uh, oof. There's not that many units to heal. They're all dying. Oh my gosh, 140,000. All right, Starflash running out of steam. Is What about the hyper upgrade? He's not, how do you even, there's a thing right there though, like hyper up repair. Here comes the bomber. Okay, that's dead. That's, ooh, not quite dead, but still a lot of damage, but he's not, how's he gonna reach the freaking, how's he gonna reach the artillery though? Okay, he's back, he clawed his way back into it. He captured this and now he's back to a 4K incomplete, but that's soon gonna become just a 2K incomplete. So Starflash is fighting with the, the, the income advantage. Boom, oh, he's got so many kills though, this Drake. Oh, Fire Room's coming in. The, the Fire Room tactics, they're, they're coming into play. Ta killed off the T-Copter, that T-Copter's been a fixture for, for decades. That T-Copter has been, oh man. Oh, it's just brutal. Everything's dying. Look at the income and the, uh, not so. Fire now is ahead in units and it's ahead in unit value. The two most important things. Fire Flash does at least have income advantage, but okay. So he's gonna kill off one of the artillery. Ooh, yeah. Good luck. Ooh, that was bad. That would've been bad. Oh, he breaks through and kills off the artillery or weakens it significantly. And he's only got this three HP anti-air. That bomber can do whatever the hell it wants. Boomba kills off that, kills off that. Recon coming in. But all is lost over here though. It's been just a massacre. I don't know if that infantry is trying to get some intel, but oh my God, this is a slog. Starflash fighting back though, 23 to 26 ahead. In the unit value, ahead in the income, soon to be only 2K rather than 4K after he, Fire Emblem captures that. But he's looking like he's gonna capture that as well. Uh, Tsunami again. He's coming up the tsunamis. Oh, the medium tank lived though. Barely it will be repaired, but only with two HP. Fire Room capturing this property now. He can luckily barely reach that to interrupt. But now Starflash down to 18 units. He clawed back so hard and now he's back down. Beep beep says the recon. Oh, he's fighting on. Starflash is weakened. Kills off a copter though, he's going to heal the medium tank. He fights the tank, he attacks a random ass tank, he die. He kills off the anti-air, he needs charge. But he doesn't have enough charge to use the freaking CO power, but he's not dead yet, he's clawing back. He's only behind three units now. Oh, the medium tank streams in, the copter, boom, boom, boom. We're back at equal income, but Fire Room is actually looking like he will get the income advantage. That's all that Starflash originally had. He's at 17 units now. This is looking awfully bad for Starflash. He's got double the unit value right now. And just like that, Starflash resigned. Woo! Woo! Starflash actually had, uh, okay, no, he had more deaths than kills. Oh my God, look at the value though. Honestly, I feel like half that shit, he had seven CO powers to, to one super CO power. Holy shit. Five to two, oh my god. Wow. Starflash made some King Kong-esque baboon plays with the CO power usage. I thought he played really well up until that point, but then he just let Fire Room right back into it. Maybe it was cockiness, maybe it was laziness. I don't know what it was. Oh my god, that was a slog though. They're just like fighting each other, smashing units in the middle, just fighting. Just, no, no one's really healing that much, just fighting back and forth, using power, just uh, just pushing them and pushing the freaking tanks forward no matter what, even though they're going to the meat grinder on both sides. But ultimately, Fire Run was able to overcome it. Starflash overextended several times. He overextended over here, Fire Run punished him. He overextended over here, Fire Run punished him. Fire Run was very disciplined, he didn't overextend the majority of the map. The farthest he overextended was over this part over here. The farthest Starflash overextended was like over here, the equivalent of over here. Uh, so, Fire Room, more disciplined when it came to overextension, I think was the difference maker. Fire Starflash had the opportunity to win though. He had two comm towers, he had income lead, but the power usage, but 
the power usage. That was the difference maker. Using the power at the wrong time allowed Fire Emblem to get his calm tower back, allowed him to get momentum back, allowed him to get a beefy ass typhoon at back. That baboon typhoon just wiped the floor with King Kong, okay? That was that was epic. But my god, Starflash was killing it at one point. Let's look at it. Where's the one where Star? This turn. Why did he use the power? Why did you use the power? He held you in 10k, you had two comp towers, and just like that, that's what happens. That's what happens. You had everything. Then you blew it. So I hope you guys learned something about using powers as Andy vs. Drake. I mean, it was chaos. People were using them left and right. Sometimes they weren't really appropriate. They weren't actually useful. But they still used them anyway, just because people liked using the powers. If you saw my Andy vs. Lash game on Raider Alcaro, man, sometimes it's better to hold the power. Sometimes it's better to wait rather than just back and forth, back and forth, back. Strategic timing of powers is not something you're typically taught in advance for. It's just something that just comes intuitively to you and you want to utilize it to the best of your ability because it can really swing games. As we see in this game, the game really swung with the powers. Starflash is winning on all, all fronts, but ultimately, the powers are what mattered. The powers that be. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.